Good morning and welcome to Plymouth Congregational Church. We're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ and glad that you're with us this Sunday morning via live stream. A special welcome to those of you who may not have been at Plymouth before, uh, but who are joining us this morning. We're really glad that you're here. And if you need a worship bulletin, you can find that at PlymouthUCC.org slash streaming. Um, this morning's service is going to fit in with Compassion Camp, which is the uh, curriculum for all ages, our intergenerational uh, summer term um, that we, we've been doing these last several weeks and that will continue for a few more weeks after today. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can see more on our website at PlymouthUCC.org. Next Sunday, we're going to be sharing worship with the churches of the Rocky Mountain Conference of the United Church of Christ with special guest preacher, Dr. Susan Brooks Thistlethwaite. Uh, Susan is professor and president emerita from Chicago Theological Seminary, and she and her husband in retirement have moved to Vail, so um, Chicago's loss is Colorado's gain. Um, there will be a link in next Saturday's email, and you can also find the link uh, next week at PlymouthUCC.org slash streaming. We will be celebrating communion since it's the first Sunday of the month, so please next Sunday have communion, communion elements ready. I'll be away for a week of continuing education starting next Sunday, and then um, I'm bringing our cameraman to college, and he and I are going to spend a couple of days up in the high country fishing before that. Um, so I'll be back on uh, August the 16th, two weeks from today. Um, and joining uh, Chris is George Theodore and also Jim Medlock, our treasurer and vice treasurer. And there they're learning how to operate the video rather than uh, counting money and distributing it. Uh, so thanks to the three of you for being here this morning as well as Dean Wallace, um, our stalwart in the sound booth. Um, we have all kinds of interesting plans for worship in August, things that we oftentimes will do during the summer, including um, the instant sermon, and that's coming up in a few weeks, so get your theological questions ready. And uh, we're going to be celebrating Jubilee Sunday in a slightly different way. We're going to be inviting you to drive through after worship and uh, we sort of have a greet the pastors um, uh, time out in the parking lot. Let's gather our hearts and minds together. Take a few deep breaths and find a quiet center so that we can worship God together. Will you please rise in body or spirit and join me in our call to worship? We come, Holy One, as people who are broken, not, not just, just imperfect, imperfect but, but fractured, fractured and, and fragmented. fragmented. Each of us bear hidden wounds that need binding up. Help, Help us, us to open, open our, our hearts, hearts to you, you Holy one. one. Help us to know it is your power that make us whole. Help, Help us, us to, spread to spread healing to our, our community. community. Help us to spread healing to our world. And may, may our spirit, spirit of wholeness breathe through this and every, every land. land. Amen. Amen. Please, a melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues. Of 
Welcome to the time for kids and adults. Um, Last week, we signed up for Disney Plus in our household. Um, And yes, it was so that we could watch Hamilton. Um, But one of the other uh, movies that, Pixar movies that I really love that Jane Ann had never seen is a movie called Brave. And it's about a young Scottish girl and her adventures. You've probably seen it. It's a great movie. But it took a lot of courage on her part to really stand up for what she believed in and who she was and ultimately what the people around needed from her. And so this week we've been talking a little bit about compassion and how that feeling of of compassion, of empathy, of really feeling somebody else's pain and then helping them to do something about it, how that takes courage and it takes bravery. So maybe when you think about courage and compassion, you can think about that young girl in Brave. So this morning, we're going to teach you a song that's in your worship bulletin. And it's called Brave Enough. And Blair is going to teach it to us. And then we're going to sing it together. So the first time we sing it, there's a little section at the beginning. And we're supposed to sing it two times, but when we're learning it, we'll only sing it once. And when we sing it for real, we'll sing it two times. brave enough to love. We are brave enough to show compassion. We are brave enough to listen and tell the truth. We can be can be brave. We can be brave. Okay, let's all do it together. And we'll do that repeat for that with that first phrase. Mm-hmm. so much, Blair, and thank you at home for singing. Will you join me in the Compassion Camp prayer for this week that's printed in your bulletin? Dear Jesus, your compassion always looked like courage. Strengthen our hearts with your bravery as we risk, reach out, and lift up our siblings near and far. Keep, help us keep our eyes on you. Amen.
Today's scripture is the healing of the man with paralysis, and it comes from the second chapter of the gospel according to Mark. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he, Jesus, was at home. So many gathered around there that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing with them a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him And after having dug through it, they let him down on a mat on which he lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man with paralysis, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes who were sitting nearby questioned this in their hearts. Why does this fellow speak in this way? It's blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived that these men were questioning him among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the man with paralysis, your sins are forgiven Or to say, stand up, take your mat, and walk. But so you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man. I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up, and immediately he took the mat and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. A few months ago, there was a writing prompt for a contest in a magazine called The Christian Century, and it was to write on the topic of scars. And to be quite personal, I have a number of scars across my abdomen from two laparoscopic surgeries related to my prostate cancer. They're they're just little scars that you might not even notice. Not the old type of post-surgical scar that shows a long, raised, white line where a scalpel scalpel had opened up a patient. Well, I, I thought about writing about these little scars, but I didn't, at least until last week. The scars themselves are small. But the wounds left behind are fairly major, and the impacts of cancer treatment have been life-changing. Some wounds and some ailments are quite visible to a casual observer. A missing limb or a pronounced limp or a hacking cough might reveal an injury or an illness. Those are tough because they're right out in the open. And people are likely to understand and be sympathetic about wounds that they can see. But don't they also leave the onlooker wondering, what happened? Or even, what did they do to make that happen? One of the things that I noticed when I was going through cancer treatment was my own awareness of the shame and blame game that some people do, especially around lung cancer. Well, was he a smoker? They ask. That is 
utterly beside the point, unless you're his physician. And it makes it possible for the observer to feel judgment and pity, but probably not compassion. It also makes the observer feel safer about herself because she knows that she's not a smoker. But it's a false sense of security, of course, since many lung cancers occur in people who have never smoked. The English word, compassion, Jane Ann said in last week's sermon, comes from the Latin roots cum and passio, to suffer with. And that's quite right. But the New Testament was written in Greek, and the word that is often translated as compassion is splagknizdomai. Um, can you imagine the, the, the Scrabble word score for that in Greek? It's 38, without double or triple squares. Splagnon means guts or intestines, and splagknizdomai literally means Compassion that is gut-wrenching. You and I, we can offer pity from afar. Compassion is a different story. You have to be involved in order for it to be gut-wrenching. And if you are aware, if you are moved, and if you have a conscience, you probably have to get involved. Maybe you won't be able to remedy the situation. Maybe you will. But you can't be like the priest in the parable of the good Samaritan who walks by on the other side of the road. You and I, we can't fix racism on our own. But we can use the gut-wrenching image of George Floyd under a police officer's knee and use the compassion that we feel to spur us on to work on our own racism and to help others along the way. We can use compassion to drive action in policy change. We can use gut-wrenching compassion in the voting booth this fall. Compassion is not wimpy. It implies and it sometimes requires tough love. And it does take courage. And it does take us being brave. You know, unless he had um, an iron spike protruding from his spine, I imagine that that man who was suffering from paralysis in today's text had a paralysis that was caused by something that that wasn't visible to the naked eye. Whether it was a nerve that was being impacted by a broken bone or a disease that robbed him of his ability to walk, we aren't told. But we do get the idea of Jesus' tough love when he says to the man, stand up, take your mat, go to your home. The invisible wound was healed. I'm going to hazard a guess that every person hearing this sermon bears scars and has some kind of unseen wound. Maybe it's a physical ailment that really affects your health, but nobody sees high blood pressure. They probably know when you've had a stroke. No one can tell if you have diabetes, but they probably see the signs if your blood sugar drops. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not there. Spiritual wounds are almost never visible. I can't tell you how many LGBTQ people have been damaged by the church's homophobia, but they are legion. Even if churches like ours offer a a warm welcome to non-straight folks, we are a tiny minority in the global whole. 
Women, too, have been terribly marginalized and wounded by the misogyny of the church. And sometimes we self-inflict spiritual wounds as well. We sometimes create our own, our own tethers of shame and sin that keep us from experiencing the abundant life that Jesus came to offer. Many of us are in need of healing of unseen psychological ailments, whether depression or anxiety or another disorder. About 7% of Americans experience a major depressive episode each year. Just to put that in perspective, that translates to about 50 people in our congregation here at Plymouth. On Friday at lunchtime, I got a call from one of our members whose 50-something-year-old son had taken his own life. And yesterday afternoon, I got another message about one of Jan Ann's former parishioners in Denver, a young man in his 30s who also died by suicide. As most of you know, Jane Ann's son, my stepson, Colin, took his own life two and a half years ago. So it hits hard and close to home for both of us. And people left in the wake of a suicide often ask why they didn't see the warning signs, especially people like me who are trained to see the warning signs. But the truth of it is that those of us who choose suicide almost always have deep, unseen wounds. We need to remove the stigma around mental illness. Help is available. And keeping it over in the shadows just makes it less likely that the folks who need help, who suffer, will avoid getting the help they need. Carla and Jane Ann and I will talk to you anytime if you are struggling and we have a really good referral list for therapists here in Fort Collins. So don't suffer in silence. So what's the unseen wound that is affecting you right now? That's a hard question, and I know it's probably not what you were anticipating this morning. But I invite you to take just a moment and think about the physical, the psychological, the spiritual wounds, especially the unseen wounds that are affecting you and keeping you from living life in its fullness. I'm going to pause for just a moment so we can contemplate that. What wounds are keeping you from living life in its fullness? I know that my first image of faith healing was a, a really creepy televangelist who would do faith healings on the, the stage on his TV show. And I remember him sticking his fingers in the ears of a person with profound hearing loss and yell, Deaf spirits out! And for me, that totally taints the whole idea 
of healing. Now, healing doesn't necessarily mean curing. It can mean helping, openness, forgiveness. It can mean seeking transformation. We yearn for the wholeness of body, mind, and spirit. Even as we understand that no one is claiming to use faith to restore a lost limb or grow new organs in the people who are afflicted. I have a profound belief in the efficacy of prayer. Not that it works like a vending machine. Insert a quarter, pull the lever, and out comes whatever you wish. Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher, said, the purpose of prayer is not to change God. It changes those who pray. The purpose of prayer is not to change God. It changes those who pray. So if you want to start changing, perhaps you can start by praying. My own belief in healing prayer is not that it will result in curing, but that it may help us toward healing through accepting a, a terminal diagnosis. We all have a terminal diagnosis. None of us makes it out. It may be learning to live with a disability, getting help with a mental illness or a mood disorder, learning to forgive somebody who has injured you and you're carrying around the wound and the burden of anger. Maybe it means learning to, to let go of shame. Or maybe it means to embrace with gratitude the abundance of blessings that God offers you. So I invite you to think back to that unseen wound that may be affecting you right now. And if you wish, I invite you to focus on it for just a moment. And I'll offer a prayer, not of curing, but of healing. Jesus, the healer, we know that you came so that all of us might have life and have it with abundance. Whether our lives are long or brief, we invite you into the midst of them. We offer to you the wounds we bear in body or mind or spirit. We hold them out, acknowledging their presence. And we invite you to share our pain. O oh Christ, we ask to be made whole. We ask for healing. Help loosen that which binds us to old and unhealthy conditions. Help us to walk into the verdant garden of your healing love. Give us the courage to seek the professional help we need. Make us partners in seeking and providing wholeness. And help us spread your healing and compassion throughout your world. Amen. Back in the world who opens up their, our doors to everyone, no matter who you are, no, where, no matter where you are in life's journey. Loving is part of God's healing work, and we are here, as Hal said. If there is anything that you need from us, we are here to heal the refugee, accept anybody, and love all. Your gifts are important. Our worship continues with our musical offering. Thank you. 
Will you please rise in body or spirit and join in our unison prayer of dedication. God, bless, bless the, the offerings, offerings of your people. people. May, may we take difference in your world, and, and may, may they, they bring, bring healing and wholeness in your realm. realm. Amen. Friends, we have come to that time in our service where we share our joys and concerns. You can share both of those by sending me an email at carla at plymouthucc.org. We have some prayers that have come in this morning. Uh, Karen Nessler and Tom offer prayers of gratitude for the dedicated efforts of Dean Wallace and others behind the scenes who make scenes who make our service possible each week. It is so true. God of compassion, hear our prayers. Uh, Diane Tukolo, please pray for my friend Pam Parker in Arizona. She has str been struggling with stage three cheek cancer and is undergoing radiation and chemo. She fell last week and broke both ankles and had surgery on them both. And now she has been diagnosed with COVID-19. She is very depressed. She needs healing, comfort, and strength. Please pray for our friend and neighbor, Debbie, who also fell and broke her hip in a few places. She is in rehab now, and it will be a long road back. She is in a lot of pain. For Pam and for Debbie, God of compassion, hear our prayers. Mary Lou Theodore would like to ask for prayers of healing for our country as we face not only the pandemic, but also the deep divides that exist around the country. Prayers for a spirit of peaceful dialogue instead of angry words. God of compassion, hear our prayers. Uh, Sue and Greg Rutherford send prayers for Mary Mosier following the loss of her, fun Steve, her son Steve this past Thursday. For Mary, God of compassion, hear our prayers. Stuart Yoshita says, um, Aloha, Carla. My prayer request, protection and comfort for my family in Hawaii and all those in the path of Hurricane Douglas. God of compassion, hear our prayers. Sally Bowlby says, please pray for immigrants at the border in a time when we break own laws our own laws and not listening to their asylum requests and when we do not treat them humanely. Please pray for the United States when our own military is turned upon peaceful citizens. Please pray for change to happen. God of compassion, hear our prayers. We have any prayer requests in the sanctuary? We have two, Hal? Um. Also, I'd, I'd like to have prayers for, um, sorry, for Kari and Ryan Collins, uh, who lost their son, Chris, to suicide on Friday. Yeah. And Amy. So Amy has prayers of Thanksgiving for her grandma, Marilyn, who turns 94 today and is watching. So for the Collins family and also for Amy's grandma, Marilyn, God of compassion, hear our prayers. Sybil McFarland says, please pray for all people suffering from mental illness and addiction and for their families. God of compassion, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Uh, Carl and Nancy Hain ask for a prayer of continued healing for our friend Judy, who has had open heart surgery and repair of two valves, and for her husband, husband Stephen, who cannot be with her. They live in Phoenix. For, for Judy and her husband, God of compassion, 
hear our prayer. Hear our prayers. Friends, for those prayers that are spoken and those that live in the silence of our hearts, let us enter into a time of silence. Holy One, we know that all things are possible with you. We know that what we see of you is only a tiny glimpse, a small intimation of all that you are. And even though we don't see you, we know you. We have seen you through the life of Jesus of Nazareth. And so we know of your intention for the healing of your world through love and through justice. We ask for healing today for ourselves, but also for our nation. Help us to be the peacemakers who help to bind up the torn fabric of our country. Where there is hate, help us to bring love. Where there is chaos, calm. Where there is injustice, equality. Where there is factionalism, unity. Where there is fear, faith. Where there is despondency, hope. We ask for the healing of your world. Help those who are working to stop the spread of the coronavirus and those who are working on a vaccine. Help those who point out that we have given your planet a chance to breathe again and give us the will to continue the healing of your earth. Holy One, be with all of those who are suffering from mental illness and addiction, and be especially present to those families who have known suicide in their midst. Help us as a people of faith to live into the words of Jesus that we pray so often, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you wherever you are today. And may you share that peace with one another. Peace.
don't forget to join us for Zoom coffee hour immediately following the service. Um, and Carla will be uh, joining you and starting that up in about 10 minutes. So as you go out today, remember that within each one of us, the healing presence of Christ is already there. The courage, the bravery that you need is already there. So may the healing of Christ that is within you be made manifest this day in all of the ways you need. Go today with the blessing of God the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.